Okay, so I didn't tell you, but you obviously maybe could figure it out. After we leave the Eamon Carter, Linda and I left the Eamon Carter, um, I did maybe like a seven or eight minute take of Alejandro Escovito playing music on the plaza. And we, we did all this cool stuff and we walked around to the food trucks and looked at the food trucks and Maine Lobster. And then Linda made her exit and I followed her. We were, we got to a point where we were running and he, Alejandro played two songs, really good musician. He's from, um, he, based in Austin. He plays cow punk. Um, it's like a, well, I'm just gonna call it cow punk. Um, Chicano punk. But it's really good music, and um, everything went great. And I and and what I didn't do was on that seven minute take or eight minute take, I didn't immediately upload it. Which sometimes I'll do that, and in the future I'm going to do that if I'm at a concert and I get a seven or eight minute take, I'll upload it right then and there. Unfortunately, I waited to export. I got all the other shows done, which I should have done that one first. And when I exported, um, it. It, it read at the last uh, minute unsupported because it, it, there was not enough memory. So I had to get it, a rid of a 19 minute show, which, which uploaded. And I, I got all the other shows uploaded from the museum, Eamon Carter Museum. And if I would have uploaded that 19 minute show, I would have had room to go ahead and export the, uh, you know, the two songs that Alejandro played. He's a very good musician. Probably one of the best I've heard live. And um, he's older, he's like 72 years old. He's, he's an Austin-based musician. Um, and does what's known as cow punk and Chicano punk. And uh, just alter it's like an alternative punk. There's other names, there's other genres that he falls into. Well, um, what ended up happening was to save room, I went and deleted my dailies, which is my originals. This has happened to me several times, maybe four or five times. And usually it's like really good stuff. It happened not very long ago with a, a 52 minute vlog that we did when we went out to Coles and I thought, I thought it was fun because we were making fun of Raising Arizona and stuff like that, I occasionally do. Well, I deleted the original and then all of a sudden I go back to the iMovie and it says, you know, that that footage is gone, but you can still watch it. So I was going to take Linda's phone and just render it, but you wouldn't have got the true essence of the sound. It would have just been coming off her iPhone and at least show you what it was. I could have maybe laid it in there, but I would have been rendering it. So I just saw it as not meant to be. And it's Alejandro's music and, uh, we were just kind of taking that music and just putting it on our show. We didn't talk to Alejandro. We didn't say, hey, we're going to put it on the Please Subscribe show. Uh, we may have, to have maybe, maybe it's better to do that, talk to the musician and tell them that the, your music is going to be on our show. So I, I, that part of it works out for me. It's a, it's a, it's a catch-22 situation. A lot of people go to concerts, you know, like just recently, there's some great footage of, Billy Corgan or the Smashing Pumpkins playing the Tower Records and a lot of that came from a YouTuber and he just put it up on YouTube, I'm sure. He might have talked to Billy, I don't know. Or or to the Smashing Pumpkins. But this was not the Smashing Pumpkins. This is Alejandro Escovito. He's a very good musician. And um you know, it just it it deleted. Well it it was it, it I I thought I was saving room and I thought it was already exported into my mind. I wasn't following the proper steps. This happened to all great filmmakers. It's probably happened to, to all the greats, Coppola, Scorsese, David Lynch, where their footage was either sent out for development and when we develop it immediately, but it was sent out for development and maybe it came back and it, it wasn't good anymore. And this aspect, it was just deleted. So I was not able to export it and send it up. It was great. Linda was running down the side, the, the sidewalk when we were leaving, I was doing a reverse tracking. What was funny was I did a reverse tracking, told Linda, I said, I'm doing reverse tracking and I moved over in front of her, running backwards in front of her, which was dangerous. And she turned around and ran backwards too. It was very funny. 
none of that is um, going to be seen. So um, you have to follow the steps correctly. What I what I suggest to the YouTuber is whenever you export and you don't have enough memory and it comes up unsupported and you know you're going to have to export again, stop and go in slow motion and be careful. You're in danger of deleting possible or at least one of the dailies. They all have to be there in order to export or it will not export properly. If you erase one little footage, it'll come up as unsupported or it'll it actually it'll come come up as um, uh, missing, it'll come up as missing footage and it won't be able to export unless you go back and correct it. I wasn't even able to do that. I deleted everything because I was trying to save room to export what I was trying to do. It's very hard to, to describe. If I had an iMac computer and I could show you the screen and everything, there's all different ways to, to keep your footage. One way is to use a camera and keep it on a cartridge. And that's something I may want to move up to, where I get a camera and I have the footage on a cartridge. But even that can be corrupted too. I've heard from Adam the Wu and Jordan the Lion in their vlogs talk about how sometimes their, uh, uh, I guess they call it a scan um, HD card, can get corrupted and they lose that footage. It can happen. In this case, it was just me pressing the wrong buttons and deleting ahead of time and getting rid of the footage before I could export it. It was already in iMovie. iMovie doesn't necessarily save it. I think you can copy aspects of it. But in this case, it was still there in the thread. I could watch it in the editor myself. I wish I could, I wish I could share that with you. But I can only tell you about the night. And it was very exciting. I don't know the two songs that Alejandro played but it was very much like Lost Boys. And it fit the werewolf and the, you know, the thing that we're, that I'm writing with Grace. It fit that scene. It was a full, it was pretty much a full moon. And we talked about the werewolf. Linda did this howl like a, like a werewolf. And we were listening to the music. We ran around. She was, she's a mu beautiful mover. She moves beautifully. And she used to be a sprinter. And there was a moment where she started sprinting and I had her run after her and then get around and get at this. It was a beautiful little thing. For, for what we could do, for the level of what we could work with. I'm sorry I cannot present that to you. I'm sorry you're not going to be able to see it. I apologize. My heart is, is hurt that I accidentally deleted that. But if you listen, at the, the very end of the Eamon Carter, we walk out onto the plaza and you could hear Alejandro's music. It's very strange. It's very uh, dissonant. And it's very unique. And I, and I really do like him as a musician. He's 72 years old or somewhere in, in that age. Uh, I'm going to do research on him on Wikipedia. He belonged to a few bands. His brothers, uh, he had his brother named Coke um, Escovito. And he, he, he belongs to all these great, great bands and stuff. And he, this was a great night for him. And he sounded great tonight. There was other people there that filmed it. So you'd be able to, to, to search it out on YouTube. If you go to Eamon Carter party on the porch and Alejandro Escovito, you'll probably be able to find it. Unfortunately, I will not be on my channel. Good luck to you, Alejandro. You're a great musician. I wish it could be there. I really do. I made a few mistakes and boom. All, anyway, we're continuing on. Um, that would have been probably one of our first live concert um, footage that we've, we've got. We, I think we've got a few others that are more like street musicians and lower end musicians, but that would have been the first professional concert. And I want your opinion on YouTubers on capturing a concert live, you know, like Scorsese did and Woodstock and everything like that, you know, they're capturing the concert live and how y'all feel about capturing a concert live and posting it without asking the musician. Did not I did not get to ask Alejandro. So the good side of this is that if that is disrespectful, then I don't have to fall into, into that disrespect. In a way, I'm respecting the musician. Um, I also feel a little strange at times uh, filming paintings and stuff, but as long as it doesn't have the camera block out sign on it, then maybe the artist does want that to be uh, recorded on video as in paintings and sculptures and stuff. We're, we're respectful to 
artists that were in the Eamon Carter that were, the lender had put up uh, information saying, do not film it. We did not film that any art that was not supposed to be filmed or we tried our best not to. We listened to the curators and the uh, security people there that asked us not to and, and we did not film art that was not supposed to be or art that was not allowed to be filmed. So we avoided that and only filmed the stuff that, that was allowed to be filmed because they do welcome filming or video. We're doing digital video. Uh, you know, some musicians, on the other hand, they do want their stuff to be filmed and they do want their stuff to be videoed and shared on social media or YouTube. Okay. I just wanted to say that and, uh, y'all have a good night. I'm going to post this. It's the last part of, of, of my editing. I edited it till morning and it was just the last little step and I, it was like the fifth vlog or sixth vlog that was going up from all the museum footage. And Linda was so excited to go out there and, and do her little dance and walk around and see the food trucks and all that. But I told you about it and you can imagine, it was kind of a blue hue. My uh, camera on the outside was not cleaned properly. The gate, you could say, on the lens was not cleaned properly. So it did leave streaks of light. You'll notice that in a few that the light was, was streaking, which I thought looked cool and fit Alejandro's feel of the music. The music was very much like something you would you would hear in like The Lost Boys, the vampire movie. And it was very dark and kind of gothic and it was just a beautiful moment. But I don't know the two songs because I'm not very familiar with his music, but I do know he's a great musician. Thank you Alejandro Escovito and thank you Eamon Carter. And uh, this is just a thank you to the artists and musicians. And good morning. <laughs>